Musket balls are very soft. I remember, uh, back from elementary school, that we went on a field trip at one point to an old historic fort. And, um, of course, there were reenactors at this fort. They were leading us all around the place, showing us, you know, how they lived back in the day, how they built things, how they, how they fought, what they ate, all those sorts of things. And, um, one of the things that really distinctly, uh, stuck in my mind as a young reenactor, or as a young, as a young school child, uh, was when one of these reenactors told me that um, when a musket ball is fired out of the barrel of a gun, if it was not perfectly rounded, if there's a sort of a, a chip or an indentation in the thing at all, then when it was fired, the air would actually cause it to spin, you know, more than usual, and it would actually fling all the way around the field and then back into the ranks that originally fired the thing. Now, um... This isn't going to be some sort of great moral crusade against that myth, that, that idea, because in all fairness, I've never heard that idea repeated by anyone else. I've never heard it um, floated around or anything like that, not even as a joke. Um, I, I have no clue where the idea came from in his mind, but that, that's what he was telling the kids. At least, at least that's what I remember him telling the kids. It's also possible to keep in mind that as a very young child, it sort of, you know, warped and twisted in my mind. But, but that's how I remember it, at least. Um, and it's a good little segue to sort of make my point here. Um, for, well, first off, of course, that that's complete and utter nonsense because, well, for many reasons, of course, the, the sheer speed that the musket ball is going to be going, um, you know, the ranges that you're expecting, like, in order for it to actually bend back around, it would have to go very, very far, be going very, very fast, never lose, it, lose its velocity over a completely flat field. Like, like it's, it's not... There's so many factors as to why that would not happen. Um, but of course, let's say, let's pretend that uh, that that was going to be the case. Uh, that indeed, if a musket ball is not perfectly round, then it would fling back on its own people like a boomerang. Uh, well, if that was the case, then European armies would never use musketry because it is almost, if not nigh on, impossible to have a flat musket ball, especially in a field situation. And that is explicitly because, or at least one of the reasons because, uh, musket balls, they're made of lead. Lead is a very malleable material. It's very, very soft as a metal. And um, there's a few just sort of little points I wanted to, to raise about that. I mean, first things first, uh, in the process of making a musket ball, you're always going to have some sort of a, uh, an indentation because more often than not, the way they are produced is simply by being cast. So, you know, you have a mold, you pour the lead into the mold, and uh, there's always going to be a little bit like left on the surface, so to say. You close the mold, you have to snip off the stuff on the outside, and then when you open the mold back up, you have a, a rounded musket ball. And as you can see, this one's new, um, 69 caliber musket ball, the sort that the British Army would be using in North America, or 69.5, I think. But yes, in the process, you're always going to have, uh, at the very least, a little flat point on the top, which I don't know if you can, oh, here we are. You can just sort of make out there on the side. Oh, there we are. Um, yeah, because of that casting process. Uh, but what's more is, aside from the actual casting process, ensuring that the thing is never going to be perfectly rounded, um, well, I, I thought that I would just sort of showcase uh, just, just how soft a metal these things really are. Um, a good example, actually, oh, before we do that, um, <laughs> there's actually just a sort of showcase. So this is the original musket ball. I decided to sort of show just how soft and malleable these things are. Well, I took a hammer to one of them, just a simple, you know, metal hammer, and I, you know, uh, clinked away at the thing for, you know, just a couple, a couple of good swings, really. And uh, it was not very long before I achieved this. Um, indeed, these things are not steel, they are not iron, they are, they are lead. And lead is a very easy thing to uh, flatten and, and destroy in, in uh, you know, in um, no short amount of time. Um, now, of course, this is not exactly a, um, a fair or a scientific comparison because, of course, um, you know, there is no situation in a battlefield or in a military setting that an individual decides that he wants to hammer away at a musket ball with, a, with an actual metal hammer. Um, you know, what, what practical you know, um, implication does this have for the field? Well, it really doesn't have a practical implication. Uh, so what I thought we might be able to do, actually, is I will take this musket ball, and again, do keep in mind that there is one flat side on it, which, you know, whatever, there's one flat side on it. Um, I thought we would do a little test where I take my actual musket here, which, as you can see, oh, dear Lord, is in very sore need of some polishing, need to bring some brick dust against the thing. And uh, we would just uh, hit it with uh, the ramrod a couple of times to uh, just sort of showcase, again, just how ridiculously... 
uh, soft they can be. Now, of course, this as well is not a perfectly scientific example in that there is no wadding, uh, you know, around the ball, that there is no, oh, there we are, I'm in a low ceiling area. Uh, there is no wadding in there, there's no powder underneath the barrel, and so it's going to be hitting metal on both sides. But still, it's just a very basic idea. So we'll take the ramrod, which also needs a fair amount of polishing here, and we'll just uh, sort of shut up. I think that's pretty fair, right? One more. There, just for good measure. Um, of course, in an actual, you know, situation where you are having to load ball like this as well, you're not just going to be dropping the ramrod against it like I was doing there. You're going to actively be trying to push the thing down. You're ramming it home. And of course, when it is seated against the barrel, you have to sort of give it a couple of good, good uh, thwacks to make sure that it is seated firmly against the powder down below. Uh, of course, in a battlefield, they'd probably be doing, you know, less... Um, less uh, firmly, but still, the idea is there. So, we've hit it a couple times, let's just uh, pull, there we are, get out of that there, and let's see what we are left with. So my finger is over top of the original, um, you know, the flat mark from the, um, uh, do -do 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 -do, from the casting earlier, and let's just look at the other side, which, oh, can't really see it too well there, but uh, yes, all of that right there, that is just from the ramrod. See how severely it's flattened in as well. On the other side, I think this is where it was seated against. Um, you can sort of see, well, just barely, how it's sort of angular in a way. Um, one side, I think the top here being uh, from the original casting, and then the other from... <laughs> oh, there, okay, there we go. That's a good angle. There we go. Haha. <laughs> um, again, you can just sort of see how severely it has deformed the actual musket ball just from a couple of... Uh, thwacks of the ramrod. Uh, no, indeed, whenever a ball is actually flying through the air towards an enemy, it will never be perfectly flat. And uh, along one, one final point uh, of a similar line, um, let's see here. Right, so here's another one that I, uh, that I hit a couple times with the ramrod just to um, sort of make sure that, you know, it was going to work before I actually made the video and embarrassed myself. And that, that one's actually even more severe. I think I may have hit this one a little harder, but um, yeah. You can see just how easy it is, really, to deform these things, you know, quite severely. Um, the thing is, as well, so what are the implications of this, the real implications? Because, again, it's not going to be flying back towards you, but what are the real implications of a musket ball being so soft? Well, when it is flying through the air, you have to keep in mind, as well, that unlike a regular bullet, or, sorry, a modern bullet, you know, modern bullets, they have a point, they have a spin to them, they, they are tools of, um, precision. They are meant to, you know, to, to pierce and enter the body in a very um, efficient way. And, um, you know, they, they, they cut through, they, they go straight through the body, all that sort of thing. Um, when a musket ball hits a body, it doesn't cut through the body. It doesn't cut through the, the flesh and the tissue and, and make a clean entry, so to say. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't cut at all in any way. You know, it's not flying with a spin and a point. It's flying as a solid ball and towards you, just like someone just threw something very simply. And uh, it doesn't, you know, enter the body very easily. It punches into the body. It punches very hard into the body. Um, so, you know, modern day ideas of, you know, um, very smooth entry. It's not going to be the case with this sort of thing. And um, the real, at least one of the real dangers from a musket ball comes not from the fact that, uh, you know, it's just very big, but the fact that upon entering the body, it can actually expand. It sort of changes in shape and size. It can grow a little bit, not grow, but, you know, it can flatten and cause more tearing and whatnot. And, uh, even, at least I've heard at least, that it's possible for them to bounce against things like bone if the velocity is going low enough. Of course, if they're going a bit faster, it can just punch right through the thing. But in any case, very, very soft, the musket ball will deform. It will, it will unshapen, so to say, and it can cause a great deal more damage in, in that way. Because again, it's not, this is really the big thing to take away, a musket ball does not pierce a body very smoothly, very cleanly, as a modern bullet does. It punches into a body. It's not very common, I don't think, for a musket ball to really carry through an individual because, of course, again, uh, because of that punching impact, it's losing a lot of the um, actual actual kinetic force when it hits the body. A bullet, a modern-day bullet, again, very efficient sort of thing. It'll cut right on through, but uh, a musket ball, it's just, it's just slamming up against you. Very inefficient as far as energy is concerned, but very efficient as far as 
stopping power is concerned. Um, and indeed, actually, it's really interesting just to show again just how malleable these things really are. There are in a couple of museums, and this is one that I found in um, a museum in Monmouth, I think it was. Yes, it was in Monmouth. Um, where you can actually see in a lot of old musket balls that have been fired, the imprint of cloth, of fabric against them from when they hit into some piece of fabric. You know, it may have been, um, you know, the result of uh, saying, you know, uh, transporting a canvas bag or something like that, but more likely it can be from actually colliding with the clothing of an individual, you know, something that they are wearing. It will actually take the shape of that which they were wearing. Another way of showing that musket balls will actually take on the texture of the items which they, you know, collide up against. Um, a couple of uh, months back, I was out in Ohio and I was doing some live shooting with my best. We were firing, you know, actual live musket balls. Um, and we were shooting against a uh, cinder block from further away than the last time when it bounced back at us and um, with a much higher, you know, actual powder charge. So it was punching straight on through this cinder block, it was destroying the thing. And um, we actually managed to find one of the bullets that had hit that cinder block. And um, this is the result of it. Now, I understand looking at this immediately, this just looks like a rock. It looks like, oh, let's uh, do, yep, there we are. It looks like a rock, just some random regular stone that I may have found on the ground nearby. And indeed, at first looking at it, I didn't realize that in fact this was the musket shot because if you turn it around, and this is when I realized what it was, you can see on the inside, it is in fact the lead musket shot having been, oh, can I get it to focus maybe on the musket instead? Hey, there we are. You can see the actual lead on the inside and the, um, you know, part of the, the casting um, process there, what have you, I'm not entirely sure what it would be referred to as, but um, you can see very clearly that this is in fact a musket shot. And it has contorted, it has bent, it has taken on the texture of the stone, of the cinder block, which it hit. See how, um, oh come on now, focus back on the stone, focus back on the stone, there we are. You can see just how, yes, rock-like it became. I mean, the color, the texture, everything, it really took it on. Um, it would do the same exact thing with clothing, with, with, with plants that it may be striking up against. There's a couple of old musket shots that will have, like, you know, um, lines down the center from, like, cornrows if it was hurtling through a field of some sort, um, you know, embedded into trees and it take on the texture of that sort of thing. Um, it, it's, it's a fascinating little piece. And, and as well, actually, a good way to, a good thing to showcase here, uh, being that, you know, it hit a cinder block. So, in fairness, cinder block, much more stiff, much more, um, difficult to punch through than, uh, you know, human flesh. But uh, all the same, that while the outside is, you know, solid and rounded and whatnot, the inside completely concaved. It bent in on itself, That just showing, again, how heavily the lead actually deformed upon hitting that surface. Um, again, lead a very, very soft metal, and it's one of the most fascinating pieces about the things, um, and, and indeed one of the most uh, dangerous, and I keep on dropping them, one of the most dangerous, uh, deadly as well. Um, um, is there anything else that I want to say about this one? Um, musket balls, soft, lead, um, easily malleable. They don't, they don't fly back at you because that's a silly thing to think. Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. That, 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 that's the video. Thank you very much, everyone. And of course, until the next time, I am and I shall remain your most humble and obedient of servants.